Hi, hello. Oh, great. Uh, all right, so now we are going to have a meet -a talk here. If you are looking for Kevin Fences, uh, it has been moved to Lenovo Breakroom. So, yeah. Uh, please, Amita. Hi, everyone. Uh, as he announced, my name is Amita Sharma, and I am from Pune, India. As my day job, I am an engineering manager, uh, managing a team in OpenShift AI at Red Hat. And out of interest, I also contribute to Fedora from last 10 years. Uh, I started with QE, and then nowadays I am contributing to diversity, uh, equity, and inclusion team in Fedora. So you can clearly see what I have done here is try to combine these two fields of my interest, AI and DEI. So let's see uh, what is the impact of AI in DEI field and how they are related, what are the impacts, and how we can mitigate some of the issues if it is creating any. So with further, we can move, uh, look at the agenda, which I try to cover here is the AI ML, the what and why. Uh, I will also try to share some of their survey results. They are not as interesting as Matthew's survey results, but uh, they are from Forbes and they are relevant. Um, I would like to show that what biases can be there in the AI ML models, and then how we can mitigate them, followed by the Q&A. So first and foremost, what is the AI and ML? We hear a lot about artificial intelligence and machine learning nowadays. Some people say that it's a bubble. Some people say that it's a cool tech. Some people are very impressed with the technology. So um, I have very limited time, but I would really like to hear from you people that what is your perspective and what is your view? What is artificial intelligence? I'm sure we all are using it in one or another way, even if you don't want it. It is in their life. In, it is in everybody's life. So anybody would like to share their opinion about what is AI? <laughs> what is it? Language models. OK. I, 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 like I, I apologize. <laughs> no, 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 nothing like that. Please go ahead. I think a lot of, you know, especially what we see of what people think AI is, the large language models, things where you can ask it a question and a pseudo-human looking response comes out of it. Mm -hmm. One more answer. Maybe somebody can cover the machine learning aspect of it. Robert? Uh, I think AI is a accumulation of everything that we all, as humans, know. And so as we teach computers, it is basically regurgitating our own knowledge that we feed into it and finding patterns and trying to simulate how we think to be able to make answers, similarly to how we make answers. So. Amazing. I already told you, you articulate things very well, and that's, that's exactly what, is, what it is, right? Artificial intelligence, we are trying to make machine learn the patterns and uh, let them predict for us. For example, if there is chat GPT, which is a lot in use, right? So that's um, AI application, and the model behind it is GPT, which is generative pretend model. And it is being trained with a lot of data, which is human generated data, right? And then it make the predictions depending on those data points and correlate them. And they do not necessarily being programmed, so they use the algorithms. For example, the GPT, it uses the neural network, forward, uh, fast forward neural network or the self-attention algor algos. So the mix of algorithms with the data and try to do the prediction in a very human way. So it is in the human's hand that how these AIs are behaving, right? Because we are the one who are, who are producing the, these data points and feeding it to the, these models. So that is the overall high level, very high level definition of AI ML. Moving on to why we need to discuss about it. So as I told you, 
uh, mentioned before that even if you are not using it directly, indirectly it has already reached or breached in your life. When you uh, open the Netflix, it gives you the suggestion for, your, for the movies and whether you like it or not. Uh, Amazon, it gives you the suggestion to buy things. If you are buying a nail, it, it may give you the um, suggestion to buy a hammer also, right? So it is all based on the artificial intelligence algorithms. And if you uh, see that, the consumer trust itself is also growing much more in the AI field. Uh, Tesla is producing the driverless cars and there are clients and consumers which, who are using it. So we can safely say that the trust factor is also increasing in the AI ML space. Every industry has a use case for AI, whether it is medical, insurance, banking, sector, telco, automobiles, edge, you name it, space, science, everywhere AI is capturing and making its way. So these, uh, these are the survey results which I have taken from Forbes Advisor magazine, and it shows that what are the most common ways the consumers are using or utilizing the AI. So where, even for the uh, texting and replying to your email, uh, AI ML is being used. So don't assume that it is your friend who is responding to you always. It can be AI generated messages and responses, right? So th these are some of the areas and which is, which is on the top of the list, like people are, I don't know, lazy to write the emails or what. So we are, that is the top in the list. This shows that how likely are you to trust the business and this is very much very closer and very much um, similar to the survey results which Matthew has shown, that there is a mixed feeling of whether to trust the AI or not. And here is the type of the content where consumers are concerned about the AI. So there are the different fields, including the job applications, where people are concerned about using the AI ML, whether it should be used and not. Okay. So what is the most, one of the most common concern we have in using the AI? It is one of the most common concern is the biases. Believe it or not, there are many incidences, the real life incidences where AI ML techniques are being used and it has been seen that those are creating biases and not determining or predicting the results in a fair way. For example, I think many of us are aware and have seen this news which were uh, very popular that Amazon was using an AI application or AI tool to recruit people and over the four years of span of time in their technical, spa uh, technical staff, it, it recruited male, uh, male staff much more than the women. and why that happened it is because of the past data because the technical staff has a much more male hired in the previous time in the even now you see that how many percentage of women are there in your current team and based if you feed that data to, to the model it's going to predict the similar way that women is less capable of male to do the technical work and that is exactly what happened in amazon and later on uh, because of the legal issues it has to be scrapped this is a, the, another incident, the real life incidents where the predictive policing algorithms are determined racist. So what happened is um, there is this risk assessment. So I don't know why, but then the paper states that more than two to three million people are in jails uh, behind the bars in US state. So one of the major country where a lot of people are behind the bars and that is a concern. And that is why there's, there's, there was a need of a risk assessment um, for the judgment, whether this criminal will uh, do the crime again or not. And that is done by giving a score of a predictive system and then judge will deliver the judgment that this criminal needs to go to the jail or they can um, send it to some uh, social centers and uh, where they can 
you know, be taught better lessons rather than sending him, them in the jail. So that scoring system was also flawed and racist because it has seen is it has been seen that it has it has been giving the much higher score to black people as compared to to the white men so after that has been uh, determined that has been removed from the judgment system so you there are much more such examples where algorithm is are predicting predicting uh, in the biased way rather than in a fair way. So I don't know if this will play or not, but I wanted to show you, I don't know. Will this play? There is no audio. I just wanted to show that Berkeley has done a study. No. The Berkeley has done a study uh, where they have collected over, over hundreds of such real life examples where the models and the AI application and the prediction systems, there has been uh, racism and biases and there has been lawsuit filed against all those tools and AI applications and the models which has these gaps and they are trying to remove it. So this study has been done by Berkeley system. So what should I do to go next? OK. So these are the classifications of the major biases which a model can go through, including the selection bias. So to understand these biases, we need to understand the different uh, steps which a model needs to go through before getting served in an application. It starts with the data engineering, where you collect the data, you filter the data, and you make data points, and then you feed that data to model. And then you train the model with that data, and then you fine tune it, you use different techniques like hyperparameter tuning, um, LoRa, QLoRa, those fine tune. So we need to understand this whole, whole process from the model getting trained with the data to the model serving and model registration. And in all those processes, these are the six classifications of the biases that can occur in any of those stages, starting from the selection bias of the data set, biased feature where we curate the bias uh, features, and the bias where, where we label the data uh, for, for our models, then active bias where actively we feed the data to the models which already have biases in it, the interaction bias where the user is prompting the model in a way that it produces the results in, in a bias or racism way. And then latent biases, that is because of the learning of the stereotypes uh, from the data which we have fed. So there is data already existing which has those stereotypes in it. For example, there are a larger percentage of males who are the doctors. So whenever uh, even the school students are using the chat GPT or the, uh, these AI applications to do their homework. So if they ask the model to give a story about a doctor or a scientist and it always represents or gives you a story about a male doctor and a male scientist, so what kind of impression it gives to the children that, okay, this is the area or this is the field where only male people can contribute and not a female. So these kind of biases can occur in the model in these different stages. So what are the mitigation points? The, so as I said, there are different stages of training the model and serving the model till the time, from the time of the training the model till the time it's served and being used to the application. So all of these stages needs to be carefully studied from starting from the data collection. We need, we need the different sources of the data. For example, here which the the pie chart which I have, I have shown is about the paper we are feeding to a model and those paper has been authored, 29% 29, 29 of those paper were authored in US. Only few percentage of the paper were from different countries. So you can see that it can automatically be biased towards the US centric people and not it, it is not a great percentage for, and fair percentage from the other countries. So we need to be very careful when we are picking our data sources. 
and bias detection in the data. When we are feeding the data, we can use different augmentation techniques where we have the data points in the x and y axis and where are there gaps, we can augment that data and fill those gaps before feeding it to the models. Then for the training and development, we definitely need to use the fairness metrics and that fairness metrics can can be for the genders, it can be for the skills, for the roles, for the geographical areas, for the race, it can be many parameters against which our fairness metrics needs to be built for uh, testing the models for the different biases. Adversal techniques, which um, it means that you prompt um, a model or LLM uh, deliberately with the wrong or malicious uh, inter, uh, intentions and the result it produces you need to study that result that what results it gives and accordingly you need to tune it for example if you ask a joke about the god it says that it gives you the answer that it's not appropriate but if you ask a joke about a hindu god it gives you a joke so we need to fill those gaps by doing the adversarial training, by asking this question before launching these models in the general public. Regularization techniques are the legal um, and guided, guided techniques where we uh, have to regulate or uh, we have to have the regulation bodies where if we find these gaps and not being fixed by the organization, then we can take the legal actions. Similarly, I have very less time left. I can go into the details, but I'll just skim through the slides that for the algorithm transparency, we have these auditing and accounting penalty structures. We have inclusive design and development uh, practices where we need to have the diverse teams which can uh, work on these models. There is much more, but the most important one is the community. I, my heart broke when we say that in Fedora we will not uh, have the AI, but I think in some or other way we have to have the, uh, the ways to include the AI in the community because that is the place where much clear, transparent and diverse vo voices are being heard and if we develop the AI or, or these solutions and that starts from using a solution before developing it. So if we deny to accept it, I think we will lag behind in the area and uh, we will not be able to contribute um, or make it better for us. Uh, last but not the least, this is the quote which I generated from ChatGPT, <laughs> but I think what I uh, need to tell is that I think machines are somewhere the representation of the real world, and if the real data, real world data is screwed up, we cannot fix the machines. So we need to make sure uh, that these two words are parallel, the real and virtual, and we need to make the continuous effort to make both the words welcoming for everybody. With that, I'll take a pause and check for questions. Thank you very much, everybody, for your time. All right, so we have around five minutes for questions. Okay, we have one. Thank you. Um, in Fedora, we're not, you know, training models at all, and maybe not even doing. You know, we don't have the uh, expertise or scope to do adversarial um, training or the, you know, other things. What can we do in Fedora to make sure that this is not a problem? As AI, as I said before, is coming to us, whether we like it or not. Yeah. So I will steal Robert's answer to that. It's a funnel. So it starts from using it. When we start using these techniques, and I think we already have stepped into that, that zone where Tim um, has, or Tim Flink has already represented us that we're going to use the techniques for uh, intelligent test selection, and we are going to use the AI techniques for that. We're going to use the, the AI techniques for uh, marking our failed cases using report portal, if I'm not wrong, if that is still a thing. So we have started already using it. And if we are using it, it means we're going to fix those problems slowly in, in the tools which we are going to utilize in process of using and utilizing it. And when we start doing that, I think that is the area where we can, we may think of developing our own tools our own models, let's say, why not? If So we see a lot of these prop common problems where we see that, 
Okay, somebody asked a question today in the morning that I, I'm not sure from where I need to start for testing, from where I need to start for packaging. So for, I think for these, to address all of these areas or gaps, we can definitely have some kind of uh, assistant, uh, the chat assistant bot for Fedora who can guide these beginner users to point out the wiki page, the PEGYAR, uh, I think somebody asked in, in the morning that how we can tag uh, in the ask forum uh, the relevant uh, stories. We, know, we don't need to do that heavy lifting if we are using a chat bot or the AIML solution. It will just push you that data if we feed all of that data to one LLM and it will be much easier, right? It will pick up, it will do the work for you. It will pick up the data, it will show you, it will, what is the code of conduct of Fedora? Just one prompt and you'll get the answer, right? Yeah. We have one more question. Yeah. Uh, no, more, more of an um, answer to Matthew. I mean, what can we do? Uh, probably we can look at, um, uh, because we, don't, we are not in the business of, I mean, we are not in the community, uh, goal of training the models, but we could accept models that are less biased on Fedora that uh, probably we can take, we can have certain criteria which we run on Fedora need to be less biased. Probably that's a way to look at it. And we highlight those gaps. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have one question. Yeah, please go ahead. So here, um, uh, you you have talked mainly about biases on LM, but I'm wondering, for example, let's say there is uh, AI designed to uh, analyze if for a hospital is worth to treat a patient or not, and it might say no. Would that be a bias or the AI doing? the job that is designed for, even though the decision might be terrible, like we are not going to treat this patient because we think it's not worth it. It's already there, it is being used and the bias is already being detected in that because, uh, so there, there is a study Berkeley has done that it was, it is for the risk assessment. The, uh, it, it determines that whatever uh, problem you, health problem you have, it is uh, how severe it is. So it gives the score of the severity, okay? So for example, if there is a American African person with the same kind of disease, it rates it, it, that patient with lower rank as compared to a white person who has the same disease. So bias is, was there detected. So it's, this AI is already being used in the healthcare. It's already in the system. Okay, thank you. Any other question? I think we have time for one more, if there is more. No, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks everybody.